further review what Cantor has already established. We're going to review his argument uh, that the countability of the real numbers is greater than the countability of natural numbers. We don't have a whole lot of time to spend on this one. This has been proven already and those who want further reference, I would suggest, I would suggest this book here by Amir Axel, The Mystery of the Aleph. And he, it's a very, it's an excellent resource uh, in the philosophical and mathematical discoveries of Cantor and other set theorists. Uh, we'll set that aside. And uh, we're just going to review very briefly. I apologize uh, for going too briefly, perhaps, but I want to get to the meat of the argument that I'm presenting. All right, Cantor assumed um, countability uh, of all numbers between 0 and 1. Okay. So every single real number between 0 and 1, every single transcendental number, he assumed countability in an argument by contradiction. Okay? So he's assuming that r equals n, essentially, that the real numbers and the rational numbers have the same level of countability, just like we've, we've proven that natural numbers and rational numbers have the same level of countability. Now, we have all if not rows of real numbers between 0 and 1. Which, by the way, it, we, we would also assume all, if not, rows of real numbers between 0 and 2, or 0 and 3, 0 and 4, and so on and so forth. Uh, but right now, we're just going to consider uh, 0 and 1, because that's the easiest assumption to start with. We don't have to consider anything to the left of the decimal point. Um, let's just pick them at random, point one five eight seven dot, 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 whatever numbers would be here. 0.2679 dot dot dot, 0.5381 dot dot dot, 0.8511 dot dot dot. Now we have a, in, in base 10, 10 to the Aleph naught possible permutations. Now Aleph naught is, for reference, uh, the level of countability of the, the level of infinity that would be countable in natural numbers. In other words, it's the very bottom line base level level of infinity, which would be the infinity of counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, dot, dot, dot to infinity. Okay, it would also be the level of countability that would correspond to rational numbers. So we are assuming, in essence, in, in our argument by contradiction, uh, that, our, that we have all if not real numbers between zero and one. All right, well, Cantor took a diagonal that most of you Probably a lot of you are familiar with this. Um, he took the first number and our very first row randomly chosen, our second number and our second row randomly chosen, our third number and our third row randomly chosen, our fourth number and our fourth row, and so on ad infinitum, fifth number in the sixth row, the nth number in the nth row, essentially. And our particular choice here would be 0 0.1681 dot dot dot. Now, we can assume, based on our assumption, a bit of a circular one there, but we'll assume, based on our initial assumption, that uh, point 0.1681 is part of our, our all if not here. And nothing contradicts that because, well, uh, our 1 is the same as this one here, our 6 is the same as here. No, nothing, nothing would contradict it, but sure enough, if we alter the digits by adding 1 to each digit here, 1 becomes a 2, our 6 becomes a 7, our 8 becomes a 9, our 1 becomes a 2. Let's say if there's a 9 somewhere here, we could make it a 0 instead of a 10 to preserve it as a single digit. Uh, sure enough, we have a number that doesn't fit. Our, it wouldn't fit because our first number would be different than our, our first row here. Our, our second number, our first digit in the first row, the second number would be different than the second digit in the second row. The third number would be digit different than the third number of the third row. Essentially, the nth digit would be different than the nth number in the nth row, and n covers any possible row that might be here. So this is a different number than anywhere that would fit with n all if not. Okay, well, we'll, re we'll reinsert, and um, no, we all know all if not plus one would be the same as all if not, because it's the same level of countability. So there shouldn't be a problem. We'll, we'll just reinsert this here and we'll repeat the process over again, hoping that it will terminate, uh, that our, our 10 to the all if not permutations will be able to fit into all if not by the fact that this will terminate. Okay, well, we repeat it over and over again, but we have the same problem each time, that as we add one to each digit, the nth number in the nth row is suddenly different. 
So what we now have is we, we now have 10 to the Aleph naught permutations that do not fit into our initial assumption of Aleph naught rows corresponding to each of these permutations. In essence, we have a level of countability that is greater here with 10 to the Aleph naught uh, than Aleph naught. Now, 10 to the Aleph naught could be a binary number system, and we'd have the same problem. So, ordinarily, mathematicians will use 2 to the Aleph naught, and we shall be using that from here on forward, because any base system would give us the same problem. We'll use 2 to the Aleph naught as greater than Aleph naught, and the other reason we're going to use that is because set theorists prefer 2 to the Aleph naught as their assumption of, of counting permutations in a set. So we have proven not only that, that the set of the real numbers is greater than natural numbers, but that the set of the real numbers is also greater than rational numbers. Or really, it was Cantor who proved this. Stop. <laughs>